the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. This is Slickery Trigger from Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! Welcome to the place. Welcome to the place. 
Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. My name is Jessie. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't for any countries. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right. Thank you guys very much for tuning in again today. I do have a couple of current event topics I want to discuss with you. You know me, I'm always watching and reading the news. All right, let's get started. There was a naval officer, United States naval officer, who was charged with espionage. Yes, I said a naval officer charged with espionage. You'd almost have to be hiding under a rock not to have heard about it, but just in case you haven't. Let me go over the details with you. All right. This is a Taiwan-born military officer. All right. Taiwan-born military officer has been charged for espionage for allegedly passing military secrets to China or Taiwan. You according to the United States Defense Department, or defense officials, quote-unquote. All right, there's been a document released describes, describing the charges, and I will go over them with you. Give me just one moment. I want to pull everything up so I have all the facts in front of me, so I don't misquote the United States Navy. That's not a position I want to be in. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let me name the officer. Let's start with that. The, he is Lieutenant Commander Edward Lin. Now, he was born in Taiwan and became a citizen of the United States in 2008. Lin's identity was uh, not released right away, but it was eventually released. All right, charges against him. He is charged with four violations of the UCMJ, which stands for Uniform Code of Military Justice, as in this is not a civilian trial. The regular laws that apply to your average public citizen do, are, are different. The UCMJ has a few different laws and rules. For example, adultery is against is a violation of the UCMJ, or Uniform Code of Military Justice. I'm probably just going to call it the UCMJ, so get used to that. All right. <clears throat> he is charged with a potential death penalty crimes because espionage, Article 106A, the prohibition on espionage, is one of only 14 military crimes that can carry the death penalty. Yes. He could be fighting for his life. All right. He is charged with four violations, including two specifications of espionage, 
three specifications of attempted espionage, five specifications of communicating defense information, and one specification of patronizing a prostitute. All right. I think, first of all, patronizing a prostitute's a bad idea, no matter what country or who you are. UCMJ, they are not taking this lightly. They are... They, I, we don't know yet if they're going to seek the death penalty, but it could be recommended. Now, it's been ages, ages since anyone has been executed as the, who was convicted under the UCMJ has been executed. In fact, I've got that date here for you. All right, that was in 1961 was the last military execution. That's been a while. Now, there are currently six people on military death row, and for those of you that don't know, that is the U.S. Disciplinary Barracks of Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Yes, death row is at Fort Leavenworth. Now, the last one was April 13, 1961. It was U.S. Army Private John A. Bennett, who was hanged after being convicted of rape and attempted murder. Yes. All right. Now, some interesting things about the military death penalty. The president himself has to sign off on the execution orders. Yes, you heard it. The commander-in-chief or the president of the United States must sign the execution orders. Now, the president does have the power to commute a death sentence, and no no one can be executed unless, unless the president personally confirms that death penalty. So, in a military capital case, the, a high-ranking commanding officer decides to bring the case to a court martial and decides if the death penalty will be sought. sought. Once it's decided, the convening authority picks those service members who will serve as a panel serve as a panel as panel members or jurors. One requirement for the panel is if the queue so chooses, at least one third of the panel must consist of enlisted personnel. All right, officer enlisted. Officers are the enlisted are the ones that no offense to officers, they're usually the one doing the heavy lifting and the grunt work. Officers are usually pushing paper. Panel must consist of twelve members, kinda like your civilian juries. There are 49 cases in which the death penalty was sought since 1984. There are currently six, yes, you heard me, six, and they are all men on death row at Fort Leavenworth. Ronald Gray, Dwight J. Loving, Hassan Akbar, Andrew Witt, Timothy Hennis, and Nidal Hassan. Now, so, we now have another potential member for death row. Do I think he's going to be executed quickly if he's sentenced? No. Do I think he stands a chance of being executed? Not under this president. Not under this president. Now, Admiral Philip... S. Davidson, commander of the U.S. Fleet Forces Command at Norfolk, is the one who will decide about whether there is enough evidence against Lynn to pursue a court martial. Yes, it's called a court martial. It is not called a trial. Uh, one of the other charges Lynn is, is accused of is providing false statements relating to his foreign travel. When you are in the United States military and you are taking leave, you must tell them where you are going. Now, I will say there are times that we've had, uh, with my pre deceased husband, we did have to sometimes change our leave address and know we can't go back and fill out the paperwork. But it would be Hotel A, something had gone wrong with the room, so we were 20 miles down the street in Hotel B. All right, that's not the same as telling telling the Navy, in this case, that you're going to Grandma's house two states away when you're leaving the country. That's a big discrepancy. 
All right, give me just a moment. I've got a clip for you on this from Fox News. Secrets to China and espionage, not the only charge he's facing. Doug McElway, live in Washington with that for us. Doug. Hi, John. This could be a huge breach of national intelligence if these charges prove to be true. One that would provide the Chinese government with knowledge of how to counteract many U.S. intelligence capabilities. They involve Naval Intelligence Officer Lieutenant Commander Edward Lin, who was native-born in Taiwan and who moved to the United States when he was 14 years old. He was a signal intelligence officer aboard an EP-3E, that's a variant of the P-3 Orion, that uses sensitive receivers and high-gain dish antennas to capture signals from deep within a targeted territory. The crew on these planes disseminates that captured information to the fleet to help suppress enemy air defenses for uh, situational awareness and for many other secret purposes. Lieutenant Commander Lin is accused of passing some of that information on to the Chinese government. The charges include and I'm quoting here, communicating secret information relating to the national defense to representatives of a foreign government with intent or reason to believe it would be used to the advantage of a foreign nation. In all, Lin faces three counts of attempted espionage, three counts of making false official statements, five counts of communicating defense information. Lin was featured by the U.S. Navy at a 2008 naturalization All right, so suffice it to say, this guy's in a lot of trouble. No, I would I like to see a president sign execution orders for those people who are on death row in Leavenworth? Yes. Now, I took this topic of this guy charged with espionage to members of the active duty military community. And every single one of them, to a man or woman, had the exact same reaction. Execute him. One of them went so far as to say, I got a rifle. I'll buy the bullets. Just let me add him. Lynn is currently being held in the brig. I'd have to say he's probably there for his own protection as much as he is for any other reason. Yes, I don't think he would be safe walking around among his fellow naval members of the United States Navy at this point. I know I wouldn't want to be walking around loose among them if I was in his shoes, but then I would never disrespect my country so much as to violate its tr the trust it's placed in me. All right, he's a naturalized citizen in 2008, which means he right, wore, raised his right hand twice and swore two oaths, not one, but two oaths to this country. He violated that. He violated the UCMJ. And more importantly, he violated the trust of all of those who are around him, who worked with him in and out on a daily basis. I think this is a despicable act. And I have to say, I'm right there with my fellows, with the service members. I'm not a service member, but I have to say I'm right there with him. Execute him. I'm sorry. They need to seek the death penalty. And next, Commander-in-Chief, present, next, somebody, let's clear out the death row. They're costing us a fortune to house and maintain. I don't get why we pay, pay for them to hang around. Yes, no, I'm not saying they don't have a right to an appeal. But there are six people on death row. Surely we can clear some of the backlog. We just need a commander-in-chief willing to stand up and sign the orders of execution. I don't think we have one. In fact, I know we don't. President Obama, I'm sorry. In my mind, you have the instincts of a farm-raised butterball turkey. In other words, you have no defensive instincts and no real instincts whatsoever. Or you would have the guts to stand up and stand up to people like Putin and maybe even sign one of those orders. Now, in Obama's defense, as much as I hate defending the man, he is not the first president under that has had people on death row in Leavenworth. Not all of these six people were convicted on his watch. But I'd still like to see some of these death penalty sentences carried out. They've been tried. They've convicted. They've appealed at least once. 
if not multiple times. Let's let's hand out the, their punishment. I've also I've never inter- spoken with anyone death row personally, but I've heard the waiting is the hardest part. And I can kind of understand that. Not knowing and waiting was the hardest part for me as the wife of a member of the special forces. I didn't know where he was or when he'd be home. So, in a way, it's kind of a good thing to execute them. In another way, nobody really, you know, there's no commander in chief who really wants to sign those orders. So, in reality, without commuting their sentences, they're essentially spending life in prison. However, personally, <clears throat> I have to say, I support the UCMJ. I've got a rifle. I'll buy the bullets. I'll help carry out those sentences. And I'll do so with a clean conscience. Because they were convicted, tried, and convicted. I don't think all six of them could be there because of Hocus Pocus. Nidal Hassan is there. The world knows what he did. All right. Now, let's move on to another topic. Yes, I've got two topics tonight. Bill Mann. So sit back, relax, and enjoy The Day That Google Died by the Third Rail, Third Rail Ramblers. A long, long time ago, I can still remember how that bandwidth used to make me smile. And anything I wish to see, it was just between I and me. Without some a hole up in DC, crimping my style. But February made me shiver. The FCC on threats delivered. Regulations were adopted. Our freedoms were accosted. I can't remember if I cried when I read of rules we must abide. Legislation that wasn't looked inside the day the Google died. So bye bye to the internet guys. Plug my PC in with AC, but the bits were all fried. And don't you know the vote passed on party lines? Singing, we're all watching Liberty die. We're all watching Liberty die. Do you believe he loved all alone the nation he found fundamentally wrong? If the media tells you so, and do you believe in all? Guys, he was caused by a video on YouTube. Well, I know McConnell's a status tool, and his pal boners and no inch fool between them not was fine. Came in your bonus every time. Woo, I was an exhausted papa of middle years with taxes and bills to drive me to tears, and a commander in chief confirming my.
SCOTUS was on its ass. Obamacare was allowed to pass. The chief judge changed the law. A blasphemy we all saw. And while the POTUS read a book on Marx, Brian Williams dodged rockets in the dark. And Bill Clinton flew to Pedal Park. The day Google died. We were singing bye bye to the internet guys. I thought my PC in with AC, but the bits were all fried. And don't you know the boat passed on party lines Singing we're all watching liberty die We're all watching liberty die I watched Lady Liberty sing the blues And I asked her for some happy news But she just smiled and turned away I went down to the Apple store Where I'd bought my gadgets years before But the man there said my apps They wouldn't play In cyberspace, innovators screamed The public cried and the state is dreamed The Constitution just a token The internet, it was not broken And the branches I would like to see They don't include the FCC Constitution says works for you and me The day the Google died So bye-bye to the internet guys Plug my PC in with AC But the bits were all fried And don't you know the vote Passed on party lines Singing we're all watching Liberty die We're all watching Liberty die We were singing Bye bye to the internet guys Plugged my PC in with AC But the bits were all fried And don't you know the vote passed on party lines Singing we're all watching Liberty die Alright folks, well that was Over the bow, right turn, over the bow White House is aware of uh, of the incident that you described um, uh, in the Baltic Sea uh, earlier this week. There were reports of uh, Russian planes flying dangerously close to a U.S. naval ship uh, and a Polish aircraft. Uh, this incident, as uh, you won't be surprised to hear, uh, is entirely inconsistent with the professional norms of militaries operating in proximity to each other in international waters and international airspace. Any peacetime military activity must be consistent with international law and norms and conducted with due regard for the rights of other nations and the safety of other aircraft and other vessels. There have been repeated incidents uh, over the last year where the Russian military, uh, including Russian military aircraft, have come close enough to each other uh, or have come close enough to other air and sea traffic uh, to raise serious safety concerns uh, and we continue to be concerned about this behavior. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, 
safety and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. Okay, thank you for hanging with me and let's get back to my second get on with my second topic. Yes, it's another military related story. You know my heart's with the military. Always is. Always has been, always will be. First, all you service members out there, past or present, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for being being willing to write that check for up to and including your life to defend this country and the freedoms we enjoy. Yes, I, as a family member, I know what it's like to be married to someone who serves. I have never worn the uniform myself. Nor will I. I'm not medically qualified, if you're wondering. So, yeah, a little tiny personal detail, but I'm not going to tell you why or what. We're just going to leave it at that. That I am not medically qualified. Now, earlier this, earlier, in the past week or so, some Russian naval jets flew dangerously close to United, a, a U.S. naval vessel. All right. Let's go over this. All right, so Russian fighter jets. I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but Sukhoi Su-24 supersonic fighter attack jets buzzed the American Navy destroyer USS Ross while it was operating in the Black Sea. It was there as part of a joint military exercise with another member of NATO. NATO, North Atlantic, Atlantic Treaty Organization. Now, Russia says the ship was headed for Russian territorial waters. That's why we did it. We did it because the ship was headed for our waters. Pentagon says, nope, wrong. Ship was on standard maneuvers, conducting a military exercise. So I don't know what you're talking about. So that's the kind of the he said, she said of it. Now, in the audio clip I'm about to play, which looks like it was recorded on somebody's cell phone or tablet, and I have not enhanced it, and I got it from usnews.com, you can hear the jet go by, and then I cut to the White House statement from the press secretary. All right, enough of my rambling, let's play the clip. Over the bow, right turn, over the bow. White House is aware of uh, of the incident that you described. Um, uh, In the Baltic Sea uh, earlier this week, there were reports of uh, Russian planes flying dangerously close to a U.S. naval ship uh, and a Polish aircraft. This incident, as uh, you won't be surprised to hear, uh, is entirely inconsistent with the professional norms of militaries operating in proximity to each other in international waters and international airspace. Uh, Any peacetime military activity must be consistent with international law and norms and conducted with due regard for the rights of other nations and the safety of other aircraft and other vessels. There have been repeated incidents over the last year where the Russian military, uh, including Russian military aircraft, have come close enough to each other uh, or have come close enough to other air and sea traffic uh, to raise serious safety concerns, uh, and we continue to be concerned about this behavior. All right. As you heard, the press secretary said, much ado about nothing, we're concerned. Well, being concerned isn't taking action about it, isn't calling Putin and saying, Hey, stop it. No, our commander-in-chief didn't do that. Or if if he did, I'm sure somebody would have reported on it. So, I have spoken with 
someone who is a military pilot. Nationality, not disclosing. Name, sorry, you don't get to know that either. He said that this behavior is unsafe, reckless, and dangerous. And it's only a matter of time before these quote-unquote hot dog tactics get somebody killed. Now, I know what it's like to get that knock, never coming home. It's not something I want anyone in any military to have to get that knock saying, your service member is never coming home. So, alright. Now, Josh Ernest also said, which wasn't in the clip, that the Russian action was a violation of the 1972 Incidents at Sea Agreement, also known as the INSCEA Treaty. Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Igor, I'm probably going to mispronounce this last name, Konoshov told TASS, the Russian news agency, that the Russian aircraft acted in accordance with international rules. He said the jets were 43 miles away from the USS Donald Cook. Though footage and photographs released by the Navy appear to show the craft much closer. All right. I don't know any cell phone microphone that can pick up stuff 43 miles away. Sorry. If so, every CIA agent would be carrying one. Sorry. Wrong. I'm going to have to call, call their bluff on that one. Yes, I will admit, sound travels further over water, but really? I've also heard reports, although I don't have the source in front of me, that this is not the first time Russian jets have come too close to mil- military exercises uh, or military operations. Um, think in Syria here. Russia had a whole bunch of troops in Syria. I've heard from... My military friends, that it was only a matter of time before somebody over there got hurt because some of the Russian pilots were not properly well behaved. Now, I'm not slamming Russia. The people, as most people are worldwide, are awesome. The government sometimes does wonky things, i.e. invade Ukraine. Come on. But I could go on about Ukraine for quite a while. So we're not going to get into Ukraine right now. As much as I'm tempted to go there. Now, you can look up the video, the full video. This is an audio broadcast. I realize I acknowledge that. That's why I just played the last little bit with the sound. Uh, Those Russian jets were not 43 miles away. I'm sorry. And our Navy knows where Russian territorial waters is. And they don't want to go in there. Thank you. That is a violation of countless treaties, not to mention international protocol and norms. So, now, normally I have a good news story for you. Couldn't find a great one today. So, I've got a parody to play. It's called The Day That Google Ta- Died by the Third Rail Ram- Wranglers, who are affiliates of the Spark Network. Oh, and if you want to see what I've been working on in my quote-unquote ample spare time, yes, I do say quote-unquote, what spare time, I have redesigned the entire Spar- the thesparkradionetwork.com website. Again, I will repeat, the thesparkradionetwork.com is the website. I have completely redesigned it. We are offering amazing advertising rates for two shows that are going to be starting live in Dallas in May, providing we can get a few advertisers. So if anybody within the sound of my voice has a business, a book, an event you want to promote, yes, independent publishers, you can have your book put on a top five radio market for a really great price, great price. The rates are all listed under the About Us page on the website. I'm not going to go into them. It would take way too much time. All right. Now, we're going to put play the day that Google died and head on out of here. And I will catch you guys next time. 
which hopefully we won't have this long of a break. Again, this parody is by the Third Rail Ramblers. It is called The Day That Google Died, and I'm going to let the whole thing play out. It's about six minutes, but I'm going to urge you, it made me laugh, although there was some truth in there that kind of stung. So, all right, enjoy the parody. A long, long time ago, I can still remember how that bandwidth used to make me smile. And anything I wished to see, it was just between I and me, without some a-hole up in D.C. crimping my style. But February made me shiver. The FCC on threats delivered. Regulations were adopted. Our freedoms were accosted. I can't remember if I cried when I read of rules we must abide. Of legislation that wasn't looked inside. The day the Google died. So bye-bye to the internet, guys. Plug my PC in with AC, but the bits were all fried. And don't you know the vote passed on party lines, singing we're all watching Liberty die. We're all watching Liberty die. Do you believe he loved all alone a nation he found fundamentally wrong? If the media tells you so. And do you believe in all the tales of Lois Lerner's lost emails? Or that Benghazi was caused by a video on YouTube? Well, I know McConnell's a status tool and his Boners and orange fool between them, I was fine. Came in your bonus every time. Woo, I was an exhausted popper of the middle years with taxes and bills to drive me to tears. And a commander in chief confirming my worst fears today. The Google died. I started singing bye bye to the Guys, plug my PC in with AC, but the bits were all fired. And don't you know the vote passed on party lines? Singing, we're all watching Liberty die. We're all watching Liberty die. Now for six years, we've been on our own. The Constitution's a shredded tone. But that's not how it used to be. When the Beyonce sang for the Emperor and champagne, it ran onto the floor with a price tag paid by you and me. Oh, and while SCOTUS was on its ass, Obamacare was allowed to pass, the chief judge changed the law. A blasphemy we all saw. Lady Liberty sing the blues And I asked her for some happy news But she just smiled and turned away I went down to the Apple store Where I'd bought my gadgets years before But the man there said my apps They wouldn't play In cyberspace, innovators screamed Public cried and the state is dreamed 
The Constitution just a token The Internet, it was not broken And the branches I would like to see They don't include the FCC The Constitution says works for you and me The day the Google died So bye-bye to the internet, guys. Plug my PC in with AC, but the bits were all fried. And don't you know the vote passed on party lines, singing we're all watching Liberty die. We're all watching Liberty die. We were singing bye-bye to the internet, guys. Plugged my PC in with AC, but the bits were all fried. And don't you know the vote passed on party lines, singing we're all watching Liberty die. All right, this is Jesse one last time. Let's remember, end the day on a positive note. Thank you, and have an outstanding day. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. My name is Jessie. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. Hi, Jesse here. I really wasn't planning on recording tonight, but my friend Rick told me his throat is so sore and he cannot be with you tonight. Hope you feel better, Rick. Rest that voice up. I know we're all going to miss you if you're not on. So he asked me if I could quickly pull together that North Korean segment I'd talked about. So, and if you have, today is April 8th, 2016. 13 North Korean restaurant workers defected. So... Yes, we've been talking. I, I told, promised you I was going to do something on North Korea. There were 13 workers that defected. They were working in a restaurant. Now, North Korea only has restaurants in a couple of countries. Uh, off the top of my head, I remember China and Cambodia. They have not released what restaurant the workers were at when they defected. Uh, also in the news today. North Korea says it has successfully tested a long-range rocket engine. Yes. Now, let's talk about North Korea. Where did this crazy country come from? All right. Now, first of all, officially, it is not North Korea. It is the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. All right. Yeah. Interesting. I know. Democratic People's Republic. Why does it always seem that countries that put Democratic Republic or Democratic at the front aren't? All right. Now, another really interesting thing. Whatever time it is in Seoul, the capital of South Korea, Pyongyang, Pyongyang, excuse me for my pronunciation, is in half half an hour behind it. They literally set themselves in a separate time zone for the sole purpose of being different from South Korea. Oh yeah. If that isn't taking things to an extreme, don't know what is. Really don't. So if it's 11 a.m. in Seoul, it is 10.30 in Pyongyang, which is just north of it. It's not very far east or west. It's pretty much straight north. All right. Now, let's get back to North Korea. A little bit more about North Korea. 
How did this country come to exist? All right. Uh, basically, after World War II, you know, Japan had occupied it for a while. World War II, Japan, we all know Japan surrendered. Korea was divided into two zones the, by the United States and the Soviet Union. No surprise. Here we go. Remember, East, West Germany, North, South Korea. Yeah. All right. And negotiations, reunification failed. So in 1948, two separate governments were formed. The DPRK, or AKA North Korea, and the Republic of Korea in the South. Uh, and a couple years later, there was the Korean War, 1950 to 1953. All right, technically, technically, they are under a ceasefire. There is no official peace treaty. Both of these countries are still technically at war. So that's why kind of tensions run kind of high. So you'll find things like the North shooting rockets off, the South blaring propaganda from loudspeakers. Because the DMZ, also known as the Demilitarized Zone, which divides them, both the North and the South have a city inside the DMZ. Now, you can actually visit the DMZ on special tours. Uh... And see this. It's really actually kind of interesting. But it's one of those things of... It's definitely an interesting thing. I mean, it really is. You can literally see where the exact border is. And you can walk inside the military armistice. Uh, I think it's, it's the MAC Commission building. I'm trying to remember. I think it's the Military Armistice Commission building. I am looking up the acronym as we speak. Um, where that's where they they hold their talks. So, yes, I have visited the DMZ. If I seem to know too much, I have been there. Yes, you can go on tours. There are both North, uh, U.S. and South Korean troops on our side of the DMZ. So, and. Like I said, I have actually been there. Now, I don't re recommend... I don't me recommend trying to cross it. I don't recommend anything like that. That would just be nuts. But it is an interesting place to visit. You can actually see the buildings. Alright, give me just one moment while I pull up this article I'm looking for. Alright, thank you for your patience. I was able to pull up that article. Alright, some interesting things about the DMZ. Both North and South Korea maintain villages in sight of each other on opposing sides of the DMZ. And... The reason these are there, at least from what I was told and what I've been able to find, is that South Korea already had one in there when it happened, and so therefore the North had to have one too. Now, uh, I will say there's some interesting things in there. In, in the 1980s, South Korea built a flagpole up at, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this, Daesang Dong, which flies a South Korean flag. And they built it 323 feet in the air and put it up there. And this had something to do with the Olympics and everything like that. All right. North couldn't be outdone. So they had to put up the world's fourth largest flagpole. And I'm probably going to mispronounce this one, but I'm going to do my best. Ki Jong Dong. And it is... I'm looking for the height. 541 feet tall. Yes, you heard that. Now, how big of flags do you need to fly on these things? 
The South Korean flag weighs 130 kilograms or 287 pounds. Yeah. They put a 287-pound flag on a 323-foot-tall flagpole. Oh, yeah. All right. So the North Koreans couldn't couldn't be outdone, so they built a 525-foot flagpole and put a 595-pound flag on its side. I just wish they'd stuck stuck to flagpole wars. All right, if you're there, and they have both sides have loudspeakers there. We're we're not just talking bullhorn size thing. We're talking massive banks of loudspeakers. And from 53, 1953 until 2004, both sides would broadcast a propaganda. So, yeah. So, and they, for the most part, they don't do these broadcasts anymore, but they do turn them back on and off when somebody... Either side can get upset. All right. Do you think the North and South can ever cooperate? Well, they kind of already do. There's this thing called the Kaesong Industrial Complex. Yeah, Kaesong Industrial Complex. All right. There are, last I knew, a hundred and 23 company companies there south korean companies and it's a very special zone it's in north korea but it's right near the dmz it's 10 kilometers or 6 miles north of the D- the dmz and it's only an hour from seoul direct road direct rail So, it's a project of cooperation. Now, whether it's open or not, that's always one of those things. Depends on the day, the week, and whose feathers were ruffled, and if they've decided to ignore it and let it go. All right. So, what's so special about this? It's the South Korean companies getting the chief North North Korean labor. Uh... And what's North Korea get? Foreign currency. We're talking a country that is essentially pretty much blackballed from most trading. Sometimes it's called the Hermit Kingdom. So, and now in uh, in 2016, it was quote unquote temporarily closed by the South. The South said, "Nope, we're closing it for now," and they claimed. That uh, the South's reason for closing it was North Korea, quote unquote, launched a satellite bomb and claimed they tested a hydrogen bomb in January. And the next day, North Korea goes, well, fine, we're kicking out all South Korean workers and we'll freeze everything at the factory. You can't have it. So thankfully, there were 280 South Korean workers at Kaesong. They heard this going. They said, we're out of here. They didn't wait. So, I mean, it's been open. It's been closed. It's been open. It's been closed. Last I heard, it was closed. But it was uh, it was a neat thing. I mean, it just shows that the two Koreas can cooperate. Oh, and by the way, uh, the electricity and the water that went to the Kaesong Industrial Complex was supplied by the South. Any sign of lights or steam or smoke coming out of a building in North Korea generally means it's active. So that's what makes another thing that happened recently. And give be patient with me while I pull up this article. All right, I got I got I got the article, and this is from the Daily Mail, which is a UK 
news company. I will get the blog post that I'd like to do associated with this up, but I couldn't write the blog post and pull these articles as uh, in 20 minutes. When I write something, I got to sit on it and read it over later. So I can talk without having to do too much editing, but writing I take takes me a little bit longer. All right. There is a... North Korea does have nuclear power plants. All right. And... There hasn't been much activity there. However, past couple weeks, past five weeks to be exact, there have been exhaust plumes from the thermal plant at Yang Young's radiochemical laboratory site. It's a main it's North Korea's main reprocessing installation to produce plutonium. Oh yeah. So yes, North Korea does have nuclear facilities. How they got them I can probably tell you, but it probably bore you, let's just say they have it. Um by the way, North Korea is also in bed with Iran. I will pull up the information on that in just a minute. Uh, now, January 6th, North Korea, yes, the January 6th, 2016, North Korea did a, did a new, uh, claimed it would conduct its fourth nuclear test. A month later, they quote-unquote, launched a satellite into space. Well, everybody who watches space said that satellite went up and immediately just could not sustain orbit. It began tumbling around. In other words, the satellite was doing absolutely nothing. Everyone says, and I agree, the satellite launch was cover for an intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM for short, test. All right. So now that we got that straight, We have North Korea who can at least get a rocket up. Can they get it down where they want or guide it? We don't know. But they can get a a rocket up. Hey, that, that, in my mind, you're halfway there. All right, so we've got rockets going up. We've got North Korea having a plutonium, processing plutonium or making plutonium, or however they go about getting the stuff ready to put on a warhead. All right. That enough to scare you yet? I know it doesn't make me happy. All right. Let's go for one more. All right. So, we've got... Let's review. We've got North Korea that can get a long range, the equivalent of an intercontinental ballistic missile, up. Can they direct it or get it back down where they want? That remains to be seen. We know they've... Test, successfully tested an engine for an ICBM. All right, they know how to launch a rocket. They know they've got a uh, basically an ICBM for design, and we know where they can get the rocket up. Okay, now, and this just came out April fifth, twenty sixteen, and again, I'm using a Daily Mail ar- Mail news article. I'll get all these links into a blog post as fast as I can at jessiespov.com. North Korea, and this is according to South Korea and several other sources, North Korea is capable of launching a medium-range nuclear missile. That gives it about uh, 1,250 miles. So Taiwan, parts of Russia, and of course, South Korea. Yeah. Hello. So, if you take North Korea, draw a 200, you know, 1,250-mile circle around it. You cover quite a bit of territory. In fact, I will upload the video, photo of this as the uh, photo to go with this podcast so you can see it. It's pretty scary. Now, this means what this means, other than the fact of, oh my goodness, uh-oh, ruh George, is that... North Korea has figured out how to miniaturize a nuclear warhead, at least to a point. Because, okay, you can make a nuclear device, but when you're not experienced at it, 
you make it way bigger than whatever fit on a rocket. All right, medium range missiles like the Rongdong, you can make it a little bit bigger. You have to make it smaller than what you first did. But it doesn't have to be as tiny as it would for an intercontinental ballistic missile. This has to do with payload, capacity, distance it has to travel. I did some research on it. It would bore you to tears. I know it did me. But basically, the size has to be smaller so the rocket can carry it further. That's the real short variation on all this. So... Even though North Korea has been spouting off like crazy that they're going to strike the United States with the ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile, they don't have that technology yet. Yet. Now, here's the other thing. Iran and North Korea. Yeah, remember I mentioned Iran in my last podcast? North Korea? Yeah, those two countries... They've teamed up. You heard me. They've teamed up. Okay, I'm going to repeat this again. Iran and North Korea have teamed up in terms of ballistic missile and nuclear technology. Does that scare anybody? And this is from Congressional Research Service. They're not known for garbage. But yeah, they have teamed up. Now give me a second and I'll get you a couple of excerpts from this. And I will post links to all this at jessiespov.com. So if you don't believe me, you can see it all for yourselves. Okay, thank you for your patience while I pulled that up. And this is a quote, like I said, I quote-unquote, ballistic missile cooperation. Iran has developed a close working relationship with North Korea on many ballistic missile programs, starting with the acquisition of SCUD missiles from North Korea in the 1980s. In the mid-1980s, North Korea developed a 300-kilometer range SCUD-B ballistic missile from prototypes obtained from Egypt. What? I just brought in another country. We'll get to that another time. And subsequently began to export them. Pyongyang developed the 500-kilometer range Scud-C in 1991. North Korea has sold both missile types, as well as middle missile production technology to several countries in the Middle East. We're we'll definitely have to get to that Terrorism 101 series. Including Iran and Syria. Wait a minute. Do the words Iran and Syria mean anything to anybody? ISIS or Daesh, take your pick. Syria. In 1992, then director of the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, Robert Gates, identified Iran, Iran and Syria as recipients of North Korean Scud missiles. In 1993, DCI, Director of the Central Intelligence Agency, James Woolsey, provided more detail, saying that North Korea had sold Syria and Iran extended-range SCUD-C missiles and apparently agreed to sell them other forms of missile technology. Right, now we get to our lovely friends, the Russians. A Russian intelligence report, which the U.S. deemed credible, Say that Iran's missile potential during this period was confined to SCUD B SRBMs received from Syria and North Korea. However, during the 1990s, the continued annual, annual threat assessments weren't so sure. All right, in 2006, we're playing fast forward, we're out of the 80s and 90s. 2006, Iran publicly acknowledged for the first time it had obtained missiles from North Korea. Yeah, Iran, North Korea, missiles, and nuclear technology. I don't know about you. I don't like any of it. 
we just signed a deal with Iran saying, you guys can't research it. We never said you couldn't buy it. We lifted sanctions, remember? And now we've got North Korea suddenly starting their plutonium processing plant up again. Oh, boy. I hope I don't see any mushroom clouds anytime in the future. All right, give me a minute. I want to tell you about one more story, and then I will let you go. As you know, I like to train everything on a positive note. Well, I couldn't do too positive and talk about North Korea other than I'm grateful 13 people defected. But I do have something I find kind of funny, all right, about North Korea. All right, we are going back to 1976, August 18th. All right, 1976, guard houses at the DMZ actually used binoculars and watched each other. Well, there was this tree that had grown up so that Station 1 and Station 2 had couldn't see each other. So, the United States told North Korea, hey, we're going to go trim this tree. So, North Korea, some North Korean soldiers just got the bright idea to literally, <coughs> excuse me, murder two American military off, army officers with axes. Yes, it's called the axe murder incident. All right. Well, three days later, the United States said, uh-uh, we're taking that tree out. So they launched something that has be- come to be known as Operation Paul Bunyan. All right, this is the most expensive tree trimming in history. I'm sure of it. I don't have the numbers. Where do you hear about, hear this one? In response to the axe, axe murder in, incident, it was deemed that the tree had to come down. So, Operation Paul Bunyan was carried out August 21st at 7 a.m. A convoy of 23 American and South Korean vehicles drove into the Joint Secure Area, the DMZ, with, with no warning. In the vehicles, there were two eight-man teams of military engineers equipped with chainsaws. All right, tree gone. Meantime, the entire peninsula was on ready alert, and there were over flights of helicopters, Cobra gunships, B-52 Strat- Stratofortresses, and F-4 Phantoms. I mean, come on. I have never heard of a more expensive tree trimming than bringing out the entire military in the area. We're talking, you know, USS Midway was off for, off offshore. B-52 Stratofortresses, F-4 Phantoms, F-5 and F-86 fighters, and an entire peninsula on ready alert to cut down a tree. I will say, Operation Paul Bunyan makes a great story. And I'm kind of glad the tree's gone. I'm sorry the officers had to die. All right, remember, end the day on a positive note. Take care. Until next time, I'll check my blog site, jessiespov.com. I will get all this put into writing and get it up there as soon as I can. All right. Bye. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com.
this is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more, and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and always stay in the kitchen when cooking at high temperatures. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. 